Hello, here's your quick guide to the 2018 budget for the working salaried class. For a working salaried person who pays direct tax and invests in equity shares or mutual funds, there's nothing much to cheer about. Here are the key messages from this budget. No changes in the tax slabs. Yes, nothing has changed in the tax slabs. There was an expectation that the tax slabs will be changed. However, nothing of that sort happened. At least the tax rates were not hiked. Increase of the education says from 3% to 4%. This will hurt your savings. Education says is calculated on your income tax. That is, if you pay rupees 10,000 as your income tax, then you need to pay 4% over this amount, that is rupees 400. This number has been increased from 3% to 4%, and it will hurt people who are in the higher income bracket. Reintroduction of the standard deduction. This is an amount that is deducted from your taxable income. This replaces the transport expense of 19,200 and medical expenses of 15,000. The standard deduction introduced is rupees 40,000. The difference of 5,800 does not help anyone in the higher bracket group. Long term capital gains in equity oriented mutual funds or equity oriented units. Last seen in 2004, long term capital gains or LTCG tax was 0% until 31st Jan 2018. Long term holding period for equity units is 1 year. year. Now a sale of an equity investment held beyond a period of 1 year and if it is gained more than 1 lakh in profit, it will be taxed at 10% without any indexation. However, all equity investments are currently grandfathered until 31st Jan 2018, which means that the base or the purchase price of all your equity shares, mutual funds, are assumed to be the highest price after the purchase of the unit and on or before 31st Jan 2018 for the purpose of taxation. Dividend Distribution Tax This should not bother you as an investor because the mutual fund house will have to bear the cost of the DDT or the Dividend Distribution Tax. But the investors will be impacted as a company that pays out the tax from the declared profits. It will just reduce the dividends that's going to be paid to you. Coming to the income tax scenarios, the combination of the standard deduction as well as the increase in the education says. Uh, it doesn't bring smile on the taxpayer's face. So if your total taxable income is rupees 5 lakhs, you save 176.6 rupees. Rupees, the more your taxable salary is, you start paying to the government. So for 10 lakh rupees, you pay 81 rupees back to the government. And these are annual figures. So 25 lakh, 65 lakh, 1.3 crores, the number just increases. The long-term capital gains tax will be applicable on gains above 1 lakh. The asset price will be determined as the highest asset price between the date of the purchase and till 31st Jan 2018. Now let's take two scenarios. You purchased equities on equities on 2-2-2010 of Rs 1 lakh of X mutual fund. Sold the funds on 2-5-2018 with a value of 1 lakh 95,000. The highest value of the funds between the purchase and 31st Jan 2018 was 1 lakh 80,000. The result, no tax because the net gains is less than a lakh. Now let's come to the next example where the equity sales sale is more than a lakh. So same example, the price of the value is 2 lakh 50,000 and the highest value of the funds between the purchase and 31st 1, 2018 is 1 lakh 30,000. The result, the long term capital gain is 2.5 minus 1.3 lakhs that's 1.2 lakhs and since the first 1 lakh is excluded the tax will be 10% over 20,000 that's 2.